Please look north for traffic when exiting. Hey everyone, today is Friday, March 5th. The time is 10.54 a.m. And the temperature right now is minus three degrees Celsius. That was the 504B King Street streetcar I just got off of. And this is the intersection of Broadview Avenue and Queen Street East. This is the South Riverdale neighborhood. And the plan for this one is to cross on over to the south side of Queen and then I'll walk west past the site of the city's first professional baseball stadium. And then I'll head on over to the site of a recent controversy here in the city of Toronto. And that is a redevelopment of the old Dominion Wheel and Foundry site. And then we'll check out a rather interesting cube house. I'm now currently walking west along the south side of Queen Street East. There goes a 503 Kingston Road streetcar that will be heading over to Victoria Park Station. So this is just to the east of downtown Toronto, but once I head over the Queen Street Viaduct, I'll be crossing into downtown. And here's a large condo development going in. This neighborhood is also known as Riverside. I started this walk was the site of the historic Broadview Hotel. There it is off in the distance. And this here is a street known as Baseball Place. So we're just going to take a quick look around this site. There's a number of new condos that have sprung up here. I was actually in one of these last year. It was of a friend who was renting a unit and they had complained about water pressure issues and some other problems with these units. Not totally unexpected of new developments here in the city. <laughs> These would be Airbnb lockboxes here. So much for the city cracking down on the use of those. And these have contributed greatly to the city, or the city's housing supply problem. So that building there is number 15 baseball place. That building is 30 baseball place. And this is the site of the city's first professional baseball stadium. And I have heard somewhere around here there was a home plate and infield drawn on some of this pavement, but I can't see it. But the 
baseball stadium here that was here was built back in 1886 and it was known as the Toronto Baseball Grounds and later it became Sunlight Park after the Sunlight Soap Works Company and then in 1897 whoa this is windy I didn't think to shield my microphone. But in 1897, the new stadium was built at Hanlon's Point on the islands. And that was where Babe Ruth hit his first professional home run. So it's possible that area I was looking for is located in between those two buildings, but I'll come back and revisit this place at a later date. thinking I might want to turn my microphone. And shield it from the wind a little bit more. It's a nice calm day when I stepped outside. Maybe this is just some sort of weird wind tunnel. I don't know. Well, you know what? I'm a dummy because I think this here is the infield. You can see where home plate would have been. It's not particularly visually pleasing. It certainly looks like a bit of a cheap out on that job, but that's to pay homage to baseball stadium that used to be there. I'm just going to turn my microphone around. Hopefully this shields things from the uh, wind a little better. There we go. It is now I don't know how well I can see that, but it is now on the inside. And here's the 501 Queen Street car. That'll be heading all the way to Neville Park, which is right next to the R.C. Harris water treatment plant. And what is this guy doing? I was watching him the whole way, <laughs> kind of expecting him to stop, and he didn't until the last possible second there. And there's a 504B streetcar that'll be turning north onto Broadview and heading up to Broadview Station. That's how I chose to come down here to start this walk. And just up ahead is the Queen Street Viaduct that was built back in 1911. And this passes over the Don Valley Parkway. Looks like there's some plaques commemorating a cabin that used to be on the site and another bridge that goes back to 1803. So this is at least the third known bridge along this site. And it passes over the Don Valley Parkway and the Don River. There's a look at the Don Valley Parkway. And this is considered the eastern boundary of downtown Toronto. And there's a look in towards the Canary District.
I've done walks through this new part of town and talked about these developments in previous videos. That's my way of saying I don't really feel like rehashing all that info right now. And veering off to the left is the start of King Street East. And if you were to stay the course, that'll be Queen Street, and that'll take you all the way across to Queen and Ronsi, where Queen Street becomes the Queensway. And there's the look south towards Lake Ontario, and that is Bayview Avenue just underneath me. And there's the Toronto Humane Society at Queen and River Street. Okay, the wind does not seem to be so bad right now. Later today, the province will be announcing the fate of the city of Toronto for at least the next few weeks. We're currently still in what they call full lockdown with the stay at home order. But small businesses and most people I know are really hoping we move into the red zone. And the mayor of the neighboring Mississauga is really pushing for that. But the city of Toronto seems content with moving to the gray zone, which means bars and restaurants will still not be able to serve people even outdoors. As well as hair salons and personal care services, shops will not be able to open. So hopefully we move to red. And there's a look south down Lower River Street and Underpass Park is just to the south of there. I recently did a walk up River Street where you can check that out if you're interested. So this is King Street East. I think this next street is St. Lawrence and I'll turn south here. As per the sign, St. Lawrence Street, and this is part of the Corktown neighborhood. I'm not sure I've ever recorded this street before. And we are heading towards that controversial redevelopment. And that would be the site of the Dominion Wheel and Foundries buildings. That's a site consisting of four buildings that were used to manufacture railway components. And they were built between 1917 and 1929. But before we get there, we'll have to head through what I think is still part of Underpass Park. So this spans over to the other side of River Street. I 
I passed through here on my walk up River Street, but I'm seeing a plaque here I haven't seen before. Oh, it's just talking about the history of Corktown, which was initially occupied by residents who found their way over from the county of Cork in Ireland. And here is the Dominion Wheel Foundry site. This would be Eastern Avenue. And there's four buildings in total. And what happened was on January 18th, unknown to residents and city officials, demolition crews moved in and started to work on the property. And the problem with that is that nobody was consulted before they did that, or at least the city of Toronto wasn't consulted, the residents weren't consulted. This is a site owned by the province of Ontario. And these buildings did have a heritage designation, or I guess they still do. And that was set in place in 2004. And you can see there's still construction crews on site. It's not uncommon for heritage properties to be incorporated into new developments, but a lot of outcry has been made over the fact that it appears the province engaged in what you could call a shady backroom deal and made a deal with the developer away from the public eye. There you can see demolished Doug Ford. Ford equals Vandal. Ford is the premier of the province who's not too popular in the city of Toronto. And there was a large rally of residents and some city councillors. And soon after the demolition crews rolled in, an Ontario judge ordered a temporary halt to the demolition. And that is where we stand right now. As this is provincially owned land, the province cites that they don't need municipal approval as provincial zoning orders supersede those of any local municipality. And the province did say that the plans were to turn the land into affordable housing and a public space, but again, the city of Toronto was not consulted, nor have those plans been revealed. And apparently in September, a developer was chosen in a less than transparent process, which is another part of the uproar. So ultimately the site is undergoing a reevaluation and the province has said they're looking to see if they can incorporate at least part of the existing structure into a future housing development. Toronto as a city has really lost a whole lot of historically significant properties. There's a we love our foundry. <laughs> Let's go take a look at What they've written on some of the building here Doug Ford out of Corktown our neighborhood Doug stay at home let's go to his house demolish 
Doug, save the foundry. And there is the concern. This property is to be demolished and a skyscraper built without any public consultation. It's really the fact that due process isn't taking place on this site that really seems to irk people. And you can see here, they had already started to go to work. I can't really see over this fence very well. Maybe I can. And ironically, doing deals behind closed doors is one of the things that the Ford government heavily criticized the previous government for during their campaign. Yet here they are doing the same thing. Love and restore our historic buildings, thanks to the carpenters, stonemasons, plumbers, and electricians. I certainly think any future plans should at least do something to incorporate the history of this site. It is worth noting that these buildings have sat, sat vacant for a very long time. Here is where I think a plaque that is as pictured on this piece of paper here used to be on the site. I remember walking by and seeing a plaque right on this corner. It looks like that's been boarded up. And this is Rolling Mills Road. So with any luck, we'll see these saved and incorporated into a space that is appropriate. And now we head on to another rather interesting site in Toronto. And there is the Cube House. And this is a three-story modular home. It's actually three units that was built in 1996 and designed by a pair of Canadian architects. And it takes inspiration directly from a similar style development project in the city of Rotterdam. be a little careful crossing here. It's certainly an interesting location right next to some very busy streets. This is where Adelaide and Richmond sort of merge together and cross over the Don with Eastern Avenue. And one of the three units here has been occupied, occupied by a gentleman who has worked for the CBC as a producer for over 20 years. And they were sold 
in 2018 to a developer. So the future of them is unknown if they'll be removed or incorporated into a future development. This is certainly kind of an odd spot to build a condo with this elevated road right here. Although this is Toronto, nothing's really surprising. People will pretty much buy a condo anywhere right now. It did take over 10 years of planning in order to get approval to build these. I've always thought they were kind of neat and interesting. And this is the kind of location where this sort of thing is appropriate because really, what else would you put here? There you can see the address is 1 Sumac Street. Although, this little stretch here is considered Sumac. There's the main Sumac Street, which is about half a block to the west of here. There's some interesting old Victorian style homes. Sumac does head north and lead up all the way into Cabbage Town, although this portion of it comes to a rather abrupt end. Oh, this is Sumac Street, actually. And I think just south of Front Street, it becomes Cherry Street. And from here, I don't really have a plan. I wanted to swing by the Dominion Wheel Foundry site. It's crazy. And since I was there, check out the cube house. And the idea to check out baseball place popped into my head as I was making my way down to record this video. There's a look east along King. And there's a look to the west towards downtown, but maybe I'll just wander around a bit before I end the video. This looks like a rather neat loft development. So just north of here will be Regent Park once you get to Shooter Street. And then north of Regent Park, you'll be in Cabbage Town. Magic building. So this is Queen Street East. And there's a streetcar I can hop onto. There's another one. Should I throw my mask on here and head over to the, uh, the station? 
Where should I just keep wandering? I think wandering one out. I did have my mask in my hand. There's some really nice old homes. So this is Shooter Street. And there's Regent Park. Those are the athletic grounds across the street. So I'm now walking west along the south side of Shooter. And that is Nelson Mandela Public School. And here is Sackville Street. So this too will head up all the way to Cabbage Town. And here's a road and trek. When I was a kid, my dad had a couple of these vans. We had one of the originals from 1985 and then at some point in the 90s, he got a more modern one that looked like that. It's a blast from the past. All right, let's head down Sackville here. You can see more of these old Victorian style homes. Or some of these are just in the style of older homes, but perhaps they're actually not that old. These ones are actually apartment buildings.
And it's back to Queen Street. There's a public school across the street. The name is escaping me. Oh, it's St. Paul. There we go. So what I think I'll do is head over to a subway station and then head north. Seems to be a number of buses. Not moving anywhere. Just chilling on the side of the road here. So coming up, this should be Parliament Street. There's St. Paul's Basilica. I was kind of hoping I would see a streetcar coming along. Cheeseburger special, fries and pop for $9.99. Oh, there we go. I'm going to catch that streetcar. Although I probably have time to walk to the next stop before it gets here. There's a bus coming our way as well. Yeah, I've got the mask on and we are ready to board the transit. So I'd like to thank you for coming along with me as I went past Baseball Place and the, whoops, my camera's going nuts there and some other interesting sights along the way. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. That's another bus. I guess maybe they're just kind of putting buses in a holding pattern here as the Queen Street streetcar is not operating at least to the west of Roncesvilles. So maybe this is just where they sort of park the buses so they can leave on time. 